يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون All you who believe fear Allah as he deserves to be feared and do not die except as Muslims And Ramadan alhamdulillah is an opportunity for an individual to increase in good and likewise for an individual to make change Alhamdulillah in Ramadan there's something for everyone as we find in the hadith, a caller will call out, Ya baghi al khair aqbil. Seeker of good, come forth. Meaning, continue with your righteous deeds and increase. So look, for the one, alhamdulillah, who is muti', who is obedient to Allah, now Ramadan is an opportunity even for them. No one can say, you know, there's nothing for me because I am like this or I'm like that. No. For the one who is upon obedience and the one who is striving to fear Allah, even there's an opportunity for you to do more. A caller will call out. When the month of Ramadan arrives, Ya baghi al khair aqbil. Seeker of good, come forth. Strive. It's an opportunity now to do even more than you're accustomed to and you regularly do. If Allah blesses you to be upon uprightness, Alhamdulillah. No doubt that's a blessing from Allah Azza wa but still you can strive even more in this blessed month because it is the month of blessings. The month of mercy, the month of forgiveness. The month where people are emancipated and free from the hellfire. Individuals who are destined maybe to the hellfire, but in Ramadan they repented to Allah, they rectified their life. Every night in the month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He frees people and emancipates them, liberates them from the hellfire. Individuals who change their life. Likewise, the one who is muqassir, falling short, it doesn't matter what you're doing. No one, no, no one of us should think that we can't change. It doesn't matter what we are involved in, what we are doing, how bad it has gotten. Alhamdulillah, still there is an opportunity even for the one who is falling short, the mudnib, the one who is sinning, the one who is disobedient. The caller will call out, Ya baghi shar aqsir. O seeker of evil, the one who desires evil, stop, halt, pause, rectify what you have done. It's an opportunity, opportunity for change, an opportunity for improvement, an opportunity to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> and it's important for us even as brothers and sisters and likewise as a community that alhamdulillah we share this with the general Muslims. Yes, alhamdulillah, the general Muslims, they know the importance of Ramadan. They know the blessing of Ramadan, but maybe they don't know the exact details. So it's important for us that we learn about these opportunities, alhamdulillah, and we share them with the general Muslims. That we share them with the people. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he commented upon the ayah, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, O you who believe, kutiba alaykum as siyam Fasting has been prescribed for you like it was prescribed for those who came before you so that you may attain piety. At taqwa, he said, taqwa. Fasting was prescribed for the attainment of at taqwa, piety, righteousness. And we have the hadith of the Prophet wasallam that emphasizes that because some people they think it's just about food and drink. Fasting is not just about food and drink. Yes, staying away from food and drink is part of it. No doubt it is part of fasting for that specified time. However, fasting is bigger than that. It's more comprehensive than that. As the Prophet ﷺ, he highlighted in the authentic hadith, مَنْ لَمْ يَدَعْ قَوْلَ وَالْعَمَلْ بِهِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَ أَنْ يَضَعَ طَعَامُهُ وَشَرَابَهُ Whoever does not leave off evil speech and evil actions, then Allah Azza wa Jal has no need for them to leave their food and their drink. Yes, the person that stays away from food and drink, خلاص, alhamdulillah, they fast correctly. In terms of that, yes, alhamdulillah, they fasted. Their fast was correct. Meaning the obligation of fasting was, has, has, lift, has been lifted from them. They fulfilled that obligation. 
But if they indulged in evil speech and evil actions, if they were using obscene language, profanity, if they were still slandering or backbiting or tail carrying, it is possible that they receive maybe minimal reward or no reward. Because Allah Azza wa Jalla doesn't have a need for us to leave of food and drink. It's bigger than that. Rather again, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may attain piety. Piety, you obey the commands, you implement them and you stay away from the prohibitions. And that is why brothers and sisters, some of the salaf, they used to say, أَهَوَنَ siyam." The easiest part of fasting is staying away from food and drink. The easiest part of fasting is staying away from food and drink. But it requires more of a struggle to also fast with your eyes. And when we say fast with our eyes, we're using the linguistic definition of fasting as siyam in the Arabic language. Because in English, yes, it doesn't make sense to fast with your eyes. But as siyam fil lugha ma'ana wal imsak. The meaning of siyam in the language is to refrain from something. So, yes, controlling your eyesight, your eyes, and causing your eyes to refrain from that which is haram, that is a struggle. For some people, harder than staying away from food and drink. Likewise, the tongue. Making sure that the tongue is utilized for that which is pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Brings the servant closer to Allah. The tongue is a blessing if used correctly. But at the same time, the tongue, billah, as we find the Prophet وسلم, he said that the servant speaks with a kalima, la yuqilaha bala, and does not pay any attention to what they're saying, it could cause him to fall into the hellfire. May Allah protect us from that. So the tongue can destroy a person if not used correctly, if it is used in that which angers Allah. So again, when you fast, you learn to control your tongue. If somebody is loose with their tongue, Ramadan is an opportunity to control that. The one who in Ramadan who is backbiting and eating the flesh of the people or tail carrying, that person is not truly going to benefit from their fast. Likewise, al imsak controlling what you listen to, what you hear. If somebody the month of Ramadan comes and you're still listening to drill music, what Ramadan is that? What type of Ramadan is that? The individual should be listening to the book of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Again, an opportunity to change. Because somebody may listen to music, Iyadu Billah. Again, there's an opportunity to change. When is that Ramadan? Get accustomed to listening to the Quran, trying to recite the Quran. Listening to lectures, listening to knowledge. Ramadan's an opportunity for that. Likewise, as it relates to the limbs. Refraining the limbs from anything that angers Allah Azza wa Jal. Likewise, we have the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that emphasizes that. Rubba sa'imin hadhu min al-siyam al-ju'a wal atash. It is possible that a fasting person, the only thing that he will earn from his fast is hunger and thirst. It is possible that a fasting person, look, he's fasting, yes, outwardly, staying away from food and drink. The only thing that he acquires from his fast, hunger, and thirst. And likewise, it's possible that the one who is standing in prayer, and it's possible that the one, is, the one who is standing in prayer, the only thing that he gets from his prayer is sleeplessness. And the scholars of the past, the Salaf brothers and sisters, they recognize this, the purpose of Ramadan. To the extent that it's narrated about Abu Huraira radiallahu an, Abu Huraira and his companions, his students, that when the month of Ramadan came, he tried to stay in the masjid as much as possible to protect the fast so that it could be utilized to increasing good because 
the less you mix with the people, especially when you're trying to fear Allah Azza wa Jal, the easier sometimes it is. Obviously, you have to mix with the people as it relates to going to the masjid and praying salah and so on and so forth, taraweeh, breaking the fast if you go to the masjid, naam, and other than that. But limiting mixing with the people, taking it as a time and opportunity where we look in the mirror, we look at ourselves because we are, as it relates to ourselves and those who are around us, we know ourselves best. We know our strengths, we know our weaknesses, we know our shortcomings. So at the end of the day, if we focus on ourselves, and that is a sign of success, alamatu khair is what? An individual busies himself with his own faults, doesn't occupy himself with the faults of the people. And we're talking about shortcomings, meaning shortcomings, slips, errors, sins. The one who is successful is the one who busies himself with his own shortcomings. And doesn't focus and just follow after the shortcomings of the people. So the Salaf, they understood the reality, brothers and sisters, of the opportunity of the month of Ramadan, the fast of Ramadan for change and improvement.